let's set up part two of the real life project. So this should be what your part one looks like, ready to go. Now we're going to add a new sheet and we're going to rename it housing. In A1, go ahead and type housing. And then we're going to select all the way down to G2, Merge and Center, and make it whatever color you like. And we're also going to make it a title. Now I want you to go from B4 to C4, and I want you to make the color really pop. So you can do it from cell styles, or you can even do it with the fill, but I want it to really stand out. Now I want you to put a border on these. So select both cells, right click this is your mini toolbar you can put the border on right here and click all borders just leave these alone for right now we're going to come back to them at the end of the video in a6 type monthly wage and then you can resize your column we're going to actually put your monthly wage in b6 so type equals go to your monthly wage page click on your monthly income and press enter if it did not automatically bring in that accounting number format, make sure that you change it. Don't forget, for part two, you're starting with $1,000. So I'm going to say starting with 1000 And I would like that to be money since it's money. So I'll format paint here and click on that 1000 Now we're going to calculate how much house you can afford. So obviously you can go lower than the low end. And you can go higher than the high end, but I wouldn't recommend too much higher. Um, this is just a good range for you to have. So usually when you're looking for an apartment, you want to spend between a fourth and a third of your monthly income. So in B8, type equals, click on your monthly rent, and we're going to divide it by four. So my low end is $700. And your high end, you'll type equals, click on your monthly wage, divided by three. So when I'm looking for an apartment, I should shoot to spend between $700 and $960 a month. You can go outside that range, but this is a good healthy range for you to look for. In A11, type rent. In B11, this is where you're actually going to put how much you're spending on your apartment. So. Right now, I want you to pause the video and go apartment shopping. Once you have found your apartment and you know how much it costs, put the rent in here. Make a note of where you are in the video before you go apartment shopping so you know where to start up when you come back. Welcome back to the video. I hope you have your apartment by now. So let's say I am living in this apartment from apartments.com. In Chesterfield, Missouri. So one bedroom is eight thirty to sixteen twenty five, and two bedrooms one thousand to twenty five hundred. So for this, you don't have to take the high end or the low end. You can pick and choose. So if you look down, sometimes apartment listings have different apartments you can look through. Um, but for me, for the use of the project, I'm just going to say that I'm picking the one that's eight hundred and thirty dollars and I'm going to put the accounting number format on it. Another thing to look out for in apartments is if you look down, some say expenses and some say like a one-time fee. So what happens is you will have to pay some sort of deposit or some sort of um, application fee. So if you look here, mine, I have to pay for a parking fee and that'll go in part three. Um, if I have a cat or a dog, I have to pay rent for them to live with me, but I also have to pay a one-time deposit. So say I'm going to be moving here, I have to pay the admin fee, the application fee, and I want my dog to come with me, so I'm going to pay that $300. So if you go back into your project, we're going to have deposits and fees right below rent, and I may need to resize column A. And instead of actually cal like mentally calculating it out, I'm going to let Excel do the work for me. So it, it's 100 plus 65 plus 300. Yours may be different. This is just the example. Do not put in exactly what I'm putting in. Put in the stuff from your actual apartment listing. If your apartment listing does not specify that there is not deposit 
or that there's not a fee associated with the application, you can assume that it's one month's rent. So if it does not tell you on the apartment listing, you have to put one month's rent in this spot. Make sure you put accounting number format on there also. In A13, go ahead and type furnishing. So this is where you're going to calculate all of the furniture you're going to buy. So now in D5, type already have. In E5, type need to buy. In F5, type location and link. And then in G5, type cost. So now we're going to resize D through E. You can make them a little more even looking. And go ahead and select all four of those and change the cell style to heading three. You may need to resize again. Now it should come as no surprise that the already have column is where you're going to enter things you already have. So when you go home tonight, you can actually put together this list a little more accurately. So you probably already have a bed. Maybe you have a couch. Maybe you have a dresser. Maybe you have a TV in your room. So these are the things you already have. So need to buy is going to be things that you don't currently have in your bedroom. So need to buy could be something like bike. If you live less than four miles away from your job, you can buy a bike. So I'm at Target and maybe I want to buy a road bike since I'm going to be riding my bike to work. So I'm a woman, so I'm big on a woman's bike, although I'm sure it's not that big a difference. And then you, maybe this is the exact bike I want. So what you'll do is you'll click on the actual item you want. And for link and location, I'm going to copy this link. And then I'm going to type in target. Because that's where I found my bike. Now right click on that cell and say link. And down here where the address is, that's where you're going to paste the link for whatever you're buying and click OK. And then the cost for my bike was $370.99. So with this cost, I'm going to select that whole column and put it in accounting number format since it's all going to be money. Now that you're furnishing your apartment, Pause the video here so you can go shopping. Once you're done shopping and you have a whole list of things you need, and remember to use that apartment essentials checklist, you can come back to the video. So go ahead and pause it here. Now that you have all of those things that you need to buy for your apartment, we're going to calculate your total furnishing cost. So how much it's going to cost for you to live in this apartment. So remember, you're buying all of the things that you will only buy once. So here you buy a paper towel holder, but in part three, that's where you're going to buy the paper towels since you're going to buy them over and over and over again. So for furnishing, we're going to do a good old fashioned equals sum, open parentheses, and add up the cost of everything you bought. Close the parentheses and press enter. Again, make sure it's accounting number format. So now let's tackle these two cells up top that you already made stand out. So in B4, I want you to type money left over. So we're going to figure out how much money you didn't spend. This is going to start your savings for the project. So you cannot go into debt in part two. You can't spend over what you already have. So now what you're going to do is you're going to type equals. You already have one month's pay. You're going to add in that thousand dollars that you started out with. And now you're going to subtract your rent, subtract your deposits, and subtract how much you spent to furnish your apartment. So this should be the formula you see. And then press enter. Again, you want to keep it with the accounting number format. Now what to look out for to see if this is negative. So let's say I have enough money left over, so I'm going to buy a car and I'm going to get it from Craigslist. And it's $3,000. That put me in debt. I can't have that car. I may need to finance one if I need to buy a car. So I'm going to delete all of that off of my spending. 
Now go to Insert, Text, and go to Header and Footer. In the center, you'll put your name. On the right side, you'll put the Part 2 due date. Put the actual due date, don't just write due date. And then click Go to Footer. On the left side, put the file name. And on the right side, put the sheet name. And then click and make sure it worked. And go back to Normal View. Make sure when you save it, that you're in cell A1 and then click save. Happy shopping!